Okay, so it'll be president, membership, communication, social media, events, treasure, and then if anyone wants to be the treasurer of this SMF, feel free to put yourself forward. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so who are we? Uh, we have a Scotland, Scotland wide network for all who work, study, and volunteer in the museum sectors and gallery. The committee is also made up of volunteers of the members and were voted in by the membership. People like the committee terms range from one year for the students up to five years for the treasurer. Is that right? Yeah, because you want the person with the money to know what they're doing. <laughs> so they have a bit of a long tenure, but you don't have to do all five years if anyone's interested. So this past year, we welcomed several new people, including Neve and Ellie as social media officers, Aruka as our membership officer, Samin as events, Demi as secretary, ordinary members, Jill, Jean, Caitlin, and Nora, and as well as our student members, which are Chloe, Javier, Summer, and Kaylee. We've done the student membership a bit different this year. Instead of having, there used to be like three universities just kind of like put students forward, we decided to make it a bit more eager egalitarian this year and students who are members could put themselves for it and the membership voted on them. So we actually have a much wider range of students from different universities than we have before in the past, while still representing some of the um, universities who were on the committee previously. And it's been great. They've gotten involved, lots of great ideas. And so it's been really nice. Oh, yeah, wait. That's some of us right there in a little smushy photo meeting up in Perth, like, you know, in-person meeting, such a big deal now. It was really nice. So also this year for the committee, our vice president, Nicola, her tenure on the committee is coming to an end. She has served um, since 2018 as events officer and now vice president. She will be sorely missed this year. And I would keep her, but our bylaws and constitution said we cannot. And I would have to rewrite it and then she would have to approve it. <laughs> And Eleanor has been on the committee since 2014 and serving as treasurer since 2018. And so she will, 15, oh my goodness, 15. Yeah, because, yeah, 2015. So this is also her time on the committee is coming to an end as well. And thank you, Eleanor, for everything you do. I think you were saying your time as treasurer has seen checks go out and bank transfers come in. So a lot has happened in the past, like, a bit while. And so we've just been really busy this past year um, planning events um, with a mix of in-person and online. So in-person things as we can all see have come back. There's been a big focus on professional development, wellness, financial. Um, we've offered financial support for our members through our professional development fund, which is reopening for 2002, 2004. And we'll help fund research, training, conferences, trips to cultural attractions, exhibitions, and we review them quarterly at our events. You can, um, at our meetings, you can find this information on our website. Also this past year, we partnered with several organizations to host things like Museum Advocacy Day, which Christine will talk about a bit later. And then upcoming for next year, there is a UKY project called the Sensational Museum. And we've also um, have partnered with that. So they'll be running workshops in 2024 geared directly towards our members here in Scotland. And of course, that's all for me. I'm gonna let everyone who's actually been doing a lot of awesome things this year talk. Up next is membership. So my name is Aurika and I have been the membership officer at SMF since about a year. So I actually joined just after the conference last year. So it's my first one. It's great to be here. Um, and I just wanted to give you a quick update. So at the moment, as you can see, we have about uh, just under 180 current members. You can also see the figures for each calendar year. So it's roughly quite similar since 2021. So that's quite healthy. And um, on the graphs here that I put together, you can uh, see how many are new in red um, on average, and then how many are renewals. Um, and then interestingly enough, I didn't put it here, but in the new ones, it's mostly um, paid membership. So that usually means like non-students or non-volunteers. And then at the bottom, um, I listed the paid and the uh, free membership. So just for your reference, to have an idea of the amounts. Uh, and then this graph shows where people are located. So there's, um, I'm, I hope you can see it, but um, there's a, a, a small cluster, pretty big cluster actually, Aberdeen, 
small in Angus, really big in Edinburgh, Fife is relatively small, mostly St Andrews, Glasgow is quite big, and then Stirling and other uh, also quite small. And other basically covers, as I put at the bottom, um, outside of the central belt. Um, and then um, in terms of future plans, um, trying to uh, improve the sign up process, which means that for new members, if you want to renew, it should be hopefully easier to uh, not have to go through many steps. And then for us on the back end too, and hopefully this will happen very soon on the website. And uh, the last thing is that we'd like to hopefully um, send around a new survey so that we can hear from everyone what their preferences are and their feedback. And on that note, I'd like to say that we'd really appreciate any feedback you have, things that you were missing, or um, yeah, any suggestions that you might have. Uh, thank you. Hello, um, I'm Neve. I'm the social media officer alongside Ellie. Um, I started in this position in May last year, so yeah, just about a year. Um, this is the first sort of thing like this I've ever done, um, so please bear with me. Um, I just wanted to talk about some of the things we've been doing um, with the social media of the Scottish Museums Federation. Um, and we've been mostly focusing on uplifting Scottish museums and using our sort of platform to benefit others. Um, so, yeah, the first thing we've been doing is prioritising sharing information from all different institutions all around Scotland and giving them a chance to shine and promote their events, things like that. Um, and also our professional development fund success story series has been a long running series on our social media where we can share people's stories of using that fund for their own benefit. Um, and also our uh, Scottish Museums Day theme this year was a museum of happiness. And we used that, it's a big multi-pronged approach on that day from a lot of the committee members on all different platforms, making sure that we're sharing people's interactions and stories of just their collections, their volunteers, their ideas and impressions about what makes a museum of happiness. Um, so that's been a really, really positive part of our um, social media this year. Um, the other things we've been focusing on are maintaining our strong brand presence, so keeping that colour of our yellow, you'll see it throughout all our social media, um, and also just making sure we're maintaining that interest and vibrancy in what we're doing. Um, especially recently you might have seen our Meet the Speakers series uh, for this conference where I really wanted to grab people's attention and we had some really, really positive feedback from that where people from outside our organisation, from outside even museums, had seen it and uh, spoken to us about it that they really liked it. So that was really, really nice. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. And teamwork as well. This is the first time there's been multiple social media officers for the SMF um, and it's been great working alongside Ellie. We've had lots of new ideas and lots of new initiatives that we want to carry forward into this coming year. Um, but also, she works part-time and is a student, and I now work full-time as well. So it's all about maintaining that uh, work-life balance as well. Um, yeah. And so we've also got some new horizons this year, um, including the TikTok account that we've now got. Um, just a really great way to reach an international audience, actually. We've got lots and lots and lots of connections with museums all over the world who follow our TikTok. We've reached over a thousand followers now and over a thousand likes, so that's really, really exciting. Um, and looking forward to releasing some more content this summer, especially some from, from today. <laughs> but, yep, that's me finished. Um, and yeah, please let us know any feedback on things you'd like to share as well. You can always email us things and we'll put it on all our social medias as well. Um, hi, my name's Samin. I joined the Feds, I think, slightly under a year ago as well as events officer. Um, I've got a team of um, student volunteers who also work with me who are fantastic. Um, so I've just put some comparisons on from um, 2022 to 2023 of um, events that we did online versus in person. Um, and you can see there's a slight shift um, in the amount of events that are being attended in person and online. Obviously, you know, COVID's had an effect on that. Um, and hopefully this year, what we want to do is make it more of an even spread so that we've got people that can attend online that are further afield. Because obviously during COVID, we'd had a huge um, boost in online 
you know, presentations everywhere. So we want to, you know, make it a lot more inclusive for everybody. Um, and you can see there all the different um, major cities that we've held events in over the last year. Um, this is from one of our events that we held at the David Livingstone birthplace um, here. And we've got the Museum of Scottish Foreign Heritage in Edinburgh and uh, University of Aberdeen special collections and museums. Those are just a few of the trips that we've covered in person um, over the last year. Um, so we've got a few goals that we'd like to achieve this year. We'd like to increase attendance on both online and in-person events, increase the number of events throughout the year, continue to build equitable relationships across the sector, reach museums outside of the major towns and cities, which I think is really important because I think these little museums and, uh, are being missed. Um, support the development of the events team. Um, that is included in myself in you know, ongoing training all the time. Um, and develop methods and practices for, for um, you know, more organised um, delivery of events, I feel like it's been a bit of a whirlwind uh, tour over the last year for me. So that's, you know, a, more of a personal goal to help um, drive the team forward. Um, and then um, events that we've got coming up um, for this year so far, we've got a really great event uh, next week, actually. So go on Eventbrite and book tickets because the spaces are very limited uh, with Calvin Hall and Galvin Grove Museum, which is exploring the Lascar project, um, which we're really excited about. We've got mental health awareness for managers and supervisors in June and interventions in the museums, decolonization and activism within the museum, which is on in September. That's an online event, so completely accessible for everybody. Um, we'd also like to develop some events off the back of the conference. Um, so if there's anything that you'd like to know more about, anything you'd like to explore in a different area, then please do get in touch and let us know. Or if you want us to showcase something within your museum and organisation, please do drop us a line because we would love to hear from you. Um, we'd like to maybe develop a little podcast once a month or a once a month coffee morning. So if you want us to explore something, please do give us a shout. And that's me. <laughs> right, so communications, I'm the communications officer. Um, so I do a newsletter, uh, a blog, which I've actually passed on to Caitlin or another other committee member. Um, and uh, I've also just dabbled in other things. Um, but so this is what the newsletter looks like. You'll hopefully all be familiar with it. Um, so it gets sent out quarterly, uh, includes upcoming SMF events, sector news, highlights and events, uh, and job and volunteering vacancies. Um, so some quick stats on our email campaigns. Uh, our open rates average around 40 to 50 percent roughly. Um, so it's actually quite good uh, overall. Um, and our email subscribers the top three locations are Edinburgh, Aberdeen and Glasgow um, in that order. So just some interesting stats. Um, and also, if you have a job or volunteering opportunity, um, training or professional development event, uh, you can send this to us if you'd like to share it with the members. Um, you can send it to us at our email, which is, which is somewhere there. No. <laughs> Just look it up online. Our email's there, Scottish Museums Federation at gmail.com. Um, and then the next, is gonna, next newsletter is going to go out in July, August time. So if you have anything you'd like to get in, just get in before then. Um, our blog is now managed by our committee member, Caitlin Jameson. And there's a couple new blog posts. I'm doing this the wrong way. There's a couple new blog posts on there. Um, so check those out when you can. Um, also, any SMF member is welcome to contribute to the blog. So if you have anything you'd like to put in, again, please just get in touch. Um, we're very nice people, so don't hesitate. Um, then I just wanted to mention uh, the advocacy event that we did last year. Uh, so this was um, an event that we did in partnership with Museums Association, Museums Gallery Scotland, and the National Museums of Scotland. 
So we put out a call for expressions of interest from heritage organizations who worked with and for their communities. Um, so we had a lot of interest. Um, so unfortunately, we weren't able to accommodate everyone uh, who applied for a stall, but we were able to have 11 museums and heritage organizations from across Scotland. Um, and they showed the fantastic work they've been doing with their communities um, to a mixture of conference attendees and MSPs as well. Um, so this event took place in the Grand Hall at NMS during the Museums Association's conference evening reception, which was a fantastic setting. It was maybe a tad bit on the loud side <laughs> um, for anyone who was there, uh, but it was still a wonderful setting and it was great to be able to speak um, to so many people. Uh, so many thanks to everyone who attended, if you're watching or if you're in this room, um, with their stalls and helping to make the event a great success. Um, and that's it for me. So here we've got the accounts for the last year. So it's the 1st of April to the 31st of March that it runs. You can see income and expenditure. Oh, you can, can you read it from up there? So new thing this year, we've got um, payments through PayPal, although at the moment PayPal has suspended us, which we're trying to fix, but it's a learning curve. I don't think it's much to do with what we did. I think they changed the rules and we didn't catch up. Um, the conference income and expenditure on there is mostly, mostly last year's because it happens in that timetable. We've also got pint badges to sell. We have some here if you'd wish. And the only one thing I've put a wee red star against is the advocacy event, which we mentioned, which we also managed to get funding from MGS to, for expenses for that. But due to an oversight of ours, we've only just paid it since uh, quite recently. So it'll be in next year's account. So that figure isn't really there. I will move on to say we've got a fair amount in the bank. In the, our bank account, we've got £2,689.29 and 29 pence. We've also got in the PayPal account £656.76. So we've got a very healthy balance of uh, over £3,300, which is uh, quite good. Over the years I've done it, we do tend to roughly balance ourselves out due in spend expenditure and uh, income. Although there's a bit of coming and going and we've got a cushion, which we'd always like to have a certain amount of a cushion. But some things we've been spending more on events in the past, which we've been trying to, our events team have been excellent and been trying to be more ambitious and get out more places as well as the online and also of late the technical side costs more as well because we're doing a, a lot more of it. I'll move on to my next slide if I can work out how to do that. Is that it? Was oh, it just on the computer? Okay. So this one I may have said some of these things already. This is my second and last slide. So as I say the main income and expenditure are membership conference and the professional development fund. PayPal, this is the first year that we've taken payments through PayPal. I've mentioned the advocacy event, uh, and so that's the explanation of that. One thing I thought I'd put in is not in this balance sheet, is there's many hours of hard work by the various committee members and partners that we work with that don't come out in the balance sheet because we are volunteers, so we're doing that out of interest in museums and the importance of museums. As I've, I think I've mentioned, the conference costs and income will be in next year's accounts. And in previous uh, treasurer's reports, I've put up a previous year's account sometimes, but it's a bit difficult. I was having te technical difficulties with it anyway, but also because of COVID, it's the comparisons are not really very good or at least aren't very helpful so uh, if anyone wants to have sight of our accounts for this year you saw them briefly there or for the last few years you can let us know and we can circulate those so that's really that and I am step uh, my uh, I'm stepping down this year 
So anyone who'd like to take on this role, it involves mostly keeping track of the incomings and outgoings, making payments and invoices and that kind of thing, and then adding it all up as you go along. So if anyone feels like it's not a particularly difficult job, but it's, I think I mentioned in, in my, the blog, which you may have read, that tenacity is necessary, <laughs> staying power. So uh, thanks very much. And it's been very good being on the committee. I would recommend it, recommend it to anybody. The last thing is, is anyone in the room possibly interested in being treasurer? Oh, right here. Yes. If you can just stand up and let us know. <laughs> And your name? Anna. Anna. So if you can come down here. Because this is an AGM, we can actually vote for people on the spot. Can you just tell us a bit about yourself, Anna? Right. Yep. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you. Um, so I'm um, Anna Sanchez de la Vega. I, ooh, I get a microphone and everything. Um, I um, manage three of the National Trust for Scotland sites in Glasgow, so the Tenement House, the Weaver Cottage, and uh, Holmwood House. Um, so I'm used to making my own budgets and I quite like it because without doing the budgets you can't get the money to do the fun things. Um, so that's how I got into operation and obviously I'm really passionate about the Scottish Museum Federation. So yeah, I think I would love to do that. Okay, yeah. and so we're going to do this the old fashioned way oh by uh, oh God. Oh, this is awful. Let me get in front I of you. I like I need lights. <laughs> that's so embarrassing. Oh, now wait. Oh, Give right. some, yes. someone, <laughs> someone second. Okay. okay, and now a show of hands. Oh, we haven't done this in ages, like it's usually all computers. A show of hands for what? yay. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Are there any nays? All right, we have a new treasurer. Wow. I was not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So we are now moving to our workshops this afternoon. We have, they're in three different rooms, and I did pull up where the rooms are. So the Making Museums Accessible for Autistic and Neurodivergent Audiences is in the Hall of Fame, so just down the hall there. We have Exploring Intertwined History Through Chinese Material Culture, which is in the Crush Hall. And in this room is Power and Memory, What is Decolonal, Decolonal Practice in the University of Cambridge Museums in here. So, okay. <laughs>